I'm Joe Harrison and I believe attitudes need to change, there needs to be greater education about people with learning disabilities and definitely more common sense. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lee Robin. I work for Mencap. Before I was born, when I was born, the doctor said to my mum that I will not live until I'm 10 years old. Now, 50 years on, I'm still here, and they're not dropping me now. And I'm also a peer advocate for two people with profound and multiple learning disabilities who I support very well. Thank you. Uh, my name's David House, um, and I work for Harrow Main Cap. Um, and Harrow Main Cap have been doing a lot of good things with people with learning difficulties in Harrow. And uh, we do a lot of work with the local health authority, including the uh, health authority and as well the uh, partnership board and the council in Harrow to make improvements in health services um, and we, ha we run a forum uh, that is paid by the NHS in Harrow uh, to make awareness of health needs and uh, we've done forums on breast cancer and testicle cancer, bowel cancer uh, and we've just done a forum on um, HIV last year. Um, we've done one about hate crime. It is very important as well, not in just locally, but in the NHS as well. Uh, things do happen. Um, and it's a brilliant thing to improve services everywhere really, uh, to make it better for everybody. I'm Lara, I work in Southwark, I work with Speaking Up Southwark, Speaking Up is a group, accuracy group, and I talk about health, I go to the health meetings and stuff like that, I really enjoy it, and there's a lot to do, I go and see different people in different centres, they talk about health and everything, some of them have a health check and some don't, I, 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 I haven't had a health check before, so I'd like to know about it, but I've been to it, I, 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 I want to know about health a lot, because it's important, I, I eat healthy too, so it's important to, to talk about health. Okay. My name is Bethany Burley. I work in autism and mental health in the Department of Health and I am 33. Now, this year the DLA did the benefits checks and they wrote to the doctor and asked her about me and said that she, she didn't need to talk to me or to my mum or to my family to fill in the questionnaire about it. Unfortunately, this doctor didn't know very much about me, and that uh, proved a problem. That meant my benefits were cut for a little while, down to £20 a week, which was not enough for me to live on. And I doubt anybody else could in the cyber country. Fortunately, my mum and I and the local CAB and my local social worker got onto this fast. We were able to locate a report that was written in 2001 about me by a neuropsychologist in Liverpool and this changed the results. So I'm now back to my £50 a week, £200 a month, which is what I should be on. These problems are happening to a lot of people. The doctors are being told to write their reports without contacting the family and the person who it is about. 
to how can they write a properly accurate statement. Thank you. I'm Vicky Raphael, I'm a family carer and in the last two years what's been good? It's been good working with the, the liaison nurse in our local hospital, um, training alongside her, um, learning about difficulties in providing healthcare from her point of view and then being able to give our point of view as well and working together. I'm really quite worried. I know that there are lots more health checks happening for people with learning disabilities, but are we sure that we know that they're quality health checks? Are, there, are we able to know that there are good outcomes? I'm pretty sure that we don't. Hello, I'm Richard Jackman. I'm here at the Department of Health's listening event in London. I have Asperger's syndrome and a very rare medical condition called panhypopituitarism. This was caused by the removal of a brain tumour on my pituitary gland, so now I have to take the hormones that my body does not produce in order to stay alive. This has changed my life, because now when I become ill, or stressed, or very happy, or too hot, or too cold, I can have an Addisonian crisis. This is a rapidly fatal condition, and unless I get an injection, I can go into shock and die. The problems I have are to do with wanting a more ordinary life. I want to leave my residential home and live in a small house with my own support so I can be near my family and keep a cat. My problem is that my NHS PCT group and my social services will not work together. So I've been left with my life on hold for two years. Here is a picture of um, how the uh, Wiltshire Council and Wiltshire Primary Care Trust have been assessing me for the last two years. Um, <clears throat> I've been assessed, reassessed, my assessments have been assessed, but for me, nothing has changed. As a result of today's meeting, I want to be able to call up my council and my CCG and have a meeting next week. I want to be able to move out of my residential home beginning of next month, end of this month. I do not think that council workers and politicians understand how awful it is to have to wake up in a place you hate and you can do nothing about it because the people who are supposed to help you don't. Thank you for putting together this event, but please do not be satisfied just putting together another document on paper. Paper does not change situations. People do. Please invest in the right people. Thank you. Hey, hi, um, this is Christian. Uh, my name's Matt. Uh, we've come up from Cambridge today. Um, you were in hospital just uh, before Christmas of last year. Um, I think one of the things that you've found through your personal experience is that although there has been some improvements in terms of reasonable adjustments, use of hospital passports, role of liaison nurses, etc., um, I think one of the big problems and as I say, you found this personally, is that unless there's a real shift in how people with complex needs are seen and perceived by medical staff, i.e. that they're actually valued as human beings, all of those things, whereas they might give some improvement, they're not actually going to address a lot of the fundamental issues. Sally and I are doing a main cap problem project yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. called getting it right yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Mm. oh we've been visiting Sally and I have been visiting doctor surgeries yeah, yeah. Yeah, to make sure make sure yeah. the services they offer you make sure the service you offers you are correct yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if not, yeah, 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 yeah. You tell them what you think should be changed. We should tell them what the thing to be changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're called reasonable adjustments. What? Reasonable adjustments. They're called reasonable adjustments. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. What else have you been doing? Mm. What sort of things? 
have you noticed any changing in some surgeries? Oh, we did about a free leaflet. Yep, yep. Easy read, easy read yeah. Yes, easy read leaflets. Yep, yep. So people can understand them. So yep, 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 yep. Do you think of anything silly? Yep. Think that's out of the buildings. Yeah, making sure that people have access. Yeah. 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 That's a, yes, that's it. Yeah. That's a fairly newish building, isn't it, Andrew? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, my name's Jim Wilson. I have a wonderful daughter called Victoria, and she's got lots of health needs uh, and severe learning disabilities. Uh, and she's 43 years old, so I feel that through her, I have a wealth of experience in the health world. What works really well doesn't cost anything. It's when hospital and medical people really listen to me and believe in me and take my word for it that, she'll, that whatever's happening with Victoria is really happening. Um, so it's all about attitude and listening. What doesn't work well is Jean gets cross um, and then if they don't access me something, then I will use the law to change their attitude. So if I come across discrimination and prejudice, which we, I often do with Victoria, when she's denied a blood test or a, a special test, then I'll get angry and I won't slap them about the head with my handbag as I used to do. I just quote um, the 2010 Equality Act. That's it. My name is Ifoma Akubwe and I live in the London Borough of Faringay. I look after a severely disabled child as well as a disabled husband. What has really worked out well for me was the day my son had a very bad seizure and I needed to take him to hospital in the ambulance. And then they supported me and took both myself, my son and my disabled husband in the same ambulance and took all of us to the hospital where we were well looked after. And what, and what hasn't worked well for me at all is the poor communication I am experiencing between uh, doctors that are supposed to be looking after my son. My son had a renal failure sometime five years ago and has been looked after by Great Ormond Street. And just last year he was discharged from Great Ormond Street and the doctor that used to see him promised that he would be referred to a local hospital and I'm highly worried that up till now I haven't had anything from any doctor and secondly my son's care has increased and one of the nurses that sees him very often um, applied for a health assessment for health funding on his behalf Again, up till now, I haven't had anything since that last year, and it's really a bit of worry for me. Thank you. My name is Peter Cronham, and I'm here today with Jim Blair and Lloyd Page, and we talked about a bit about St George's today, St George's Hospital today, and what we do, and so the film Peter's Story, and on Thursday, we're going to see this, go to the Royal College of Nursing on Thursday and see this silver dolphin. And have my photo taken with a silver dolphin. And and, and that'd be another good day. And Peter, what is the silver dolphin? It won, it, I showed the DVD in Cairns, Peter's story, and it won the silver dolphin award. Hmm? I went to hospital um, for a minor seizure. Um, they, I was first on the list 
which was good. Um, my mum came with me, she was allowed to stay with me. Um, the bad thing was the letter, we didn't know where we was meant to go. They, they wouldn't explain it. Yeah, but when I, before the, the good thing about it was when I went to the operating um, thing, they just was talking about what they were going to do. They said that it might hurt if I wanted to squeeze the doctor's hand, I could. And they was putting the needle in me to make me go to sleep. So that was all good, that they were talking through what they were doing. And then there was a nurse beside my bed, um, making sure everything was okay when I woke up. And I was a bit sleepy. I was like really, 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 really sleepy after that, after the anaesthetic. Understanding, disability awareness, communication, we are human.